Hey, welcome, Nathan Crane here. Super excited for you to join me in this really special interview with my dear friend, Cyrus Kambada. Cyrus is a PhD in nutritional biochemistry. He was trained at Stanford University and UC Berkeley. He's a highly renowned expert in metabolic conditions related to blood sugar, cholesterol, and blood pressure. He's a dear friend, incredibly brilliant, somebody who I really look up to, who I've learned a lot from over the years as we've interviewed each other back and forth. And I can tell you, if you have questions about blood pressure, if you have questions about cholesterol, if you have questions about blood sugar in any way whatsoever, this is the man you want to talk to. And we're going to talk about, he's going to share with us in this interview right now, uh, a couple of things. Number one, how he opened my eyes to this incredible ancient superfood that is truly blowing my mind that I think you absolutely need to know about. Something I've added in to my own diet that is super powerful related to cholesterol, blood pressure, and blood sugar. Um, and really a powerful solution for helping reduce and balance each of those aspects of our metabolic health. So without further ado, Cyrus, brother, thanks for coming on to talk with my community, man. I'm super looking forward to this. What's up, my man? Thank you for having me here today. I appreciate it. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure talking to Nathan, always. Yeah, so we were kind of talking offline, kind of prepping for this interview, and one of the questions that I, I wanted to ask you was about this kind of commonality that you've seen in your research among these three things, right? These three um, metabolic conditions that, unfortunately, millions and millions of people are experiencing today, whether it's high blood pressure, it's high, you know, it's blood sugar out of whack, could be high blood sugar, you know, it could be low blood sugar, right? But just blood sugar problems and cholesterol problems, right? Especially high yeah. blood, high cholesterol. And so you kind of, uh, in, well, not kind of in your research, you have discovered really a, a number one commonality amongst all three of those. Uh, can you talk about that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so you, you hit it on the head here, which is that in today's world, people who are living with either high blood sugar or high blood pressure or high cholesterol, generally speaking, don't have just one of those conditions, but multiple. There's a constellation of metabolic disorders, which all tends to travel with each other. Okay, it's not, it doesn't happen in every single case, but it is very common that people now test positive for one, I'm sorry, for multiple of those. And uh, they may even have a, other forms of inflammation as well that affect other tissues. So um, part of the reason that this is happening is because our food supply has become very adulterated over the course of the last 20 to 30 years. Uh, the rate of obesity in this country has gone up significantly. And uh, as a result, I think we as a population are just sort of unhealthier than we've ever have been before. And, you know, you guys all know this just like I do, which is that the rates of most chronic diseases, whether it's any form of cancer, whether it's type 2 diabetes, whether it's heart disease, whether it's high cholesterol, high blood pressure, chronic kidney disease, fatty liver disease, and beyond, all of these are going up. And it doesn't matter how much, you know, these like large organizations are trying to like solve the problem. It doesn't seem to be working. Right. So um, I've been in this world of uh, food for the past, you know, 20 years, ever since I was diagnosed with type one diabetes in the age of 22, I had no choice but to take my food intake seriously. It was a, it was a slap in the face at a very young age where I was like, oh boy, like I got to really think about what I'm putting in my body because not only do I have like very specific, like I have a high energy requirement because I'm an athlete, just like you. And I have to eat a lot of food, but I also don't want to be eating a bunch of junky food that's going to cause more inflammation and cause me to develop more health conditions over the course of time. So my intuition told me back in the year 2003 that I should pay attention to food and I should learn all of the ins and outs of how to eat a diet that truly can neutralize inflammation and lower your risk for all chronic disease, 100%, period, end of story. So that way your risk for any of these chronic conditions that we're talking about can go, can go down significantly or maybe even go to zero. So in this quest, um, I became, you know, I went to P uh, UC Berkeley and I got a PhD in nutritional biochemistry because I just wanted to super nerd geek out on everything related to uh, insulin resistance, which is an underlying condition that not only increases your risk for type 2 diabetes and prediabetes, but also is underlying uh, the underlying condition that can cause a significant inflammatory problem inside of your liver and inside of your pancreas and inside of your kidney and inside of your brain. And so once I wrapped my head around this idea that there's this thing, this silent condition that very few people know anything about called insulin resistance, and this thing is just fed, just absolutely fed by inflammation, the whole picture just started to become really clear for me. 
Okay. So at the base of all of these conditions is this thing called inflammation. And we've heard that word a thousand times before. Inflammation, inflammation, inflammation. Everybody's trying to eat a diet that's anti-inflammatory so that they can live their optimal health, right? Now, inflammation is a, uh, is a, is a blanket term that, re that refers to a dysregulated collection of metabolic processes that can happen in any tissue. So you can have inflammation of your thyroid gland that can lead to thyroiditis or Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. You can have inflammation inside of your brain, which can cause cognitive decline. You can have inflammation inside of your liver, which can cause liver cancer. You can cause, you can have inflammation inside of your liver, which can cause liver insulin resistance. The same thing can happen in your gut, which can cause dysbiosis and beyond, right? So inflammation is a, uh, is the root cause of pretty much every chronic metabolic disease that we know. And insulin resistance is a manifestation or a collection of symptoms that result when you are living in an inflamed state, right? So cancer in particular is an inflammation. It's like the mother of all uh, inflammatory conditions, okay? So cancer requires an inflammatory state in order to be present in the first place, which is why if you are living with cancer or anybody in your family is living with cancer, I, I think it's very important to be very attuned to the idea that inflammation is the target and our goal is to try and get rid of that altogether, okay? so. The food that you eat matters. The food that you eat can cause inflammation and that's usually the first target. It's the first place to start. Just like you, Nathan, I teach people how to eat a whole food plant-based diet. When you're living with any form of blood glucose dysregulation, which again travels with high cholesterol and high blood pressure, the name of the game is to eat a diet that is actually low in fat, not a diet that's low in sugar. Of course, I want you to be eating a diet that's low in refined sugar. There's no question about that. But what most people don't realize is that it's actually a lipid metabolism disorder. And when you lower your total fat intake to about 15% of your total calories, that's when the magic happens. That's when all of a sudden you become very insulin sensitive. And as a result of that, the level of inflammation inside of your liver goes way down. The level of inflammation inside of your muscles goes way down. And your liver and muscles literally become very receptive to glucose in your blood. So, I mean, obviously we could talk about this one topic for hours and we have in like other podcasts and stuff, but I want to stay really focused in on, um, you know, number one kind of packaging together. What you just said is the number one commonality is inflammation, chronic inflammation. And the, uh, in addition to that, it is insulin resistance. And so what we really want to do is we want to, become insulin sensitive. We want to eat foods and, you know, supplements and whatever it is and exercise and intermittent fasting, different things that improve our insulin sensitivity, right? Good quality sleep, reduction of stress, all these things that you teach and I teach that we know improve insulin sensitivity, you know, shedding excess body fat, all these kinds of things and, um, and reduce chronic inflammation at the same time. And then as a result, these, symptoms, these blood pressure, cholesterol, high blood sugar, then we're going to see those start to normalize. No doubt. Because those are no symptoms. Doubt. Those are not a disease. They're not a cause. They're not a, you know, it's like you don't need a drug to bring down your blood pressure. Your blood pressure, you know, Dr. Lodi told me this years ago. He said, you know, the myth of, he calls it the myth of disease. He says, there's a reason your body created high blood pressure. It's because your arteries are clogged. And if it didn't, you would probably die right? Your arteries are clogging up. Your body can't, you know, it needs to increase its blood pressure to get enough nutrients to the rest of your body. And if not, maybe you would become deficient or die or have other problems. So the high blood pressure is actually your body adapting to the poor environment that we've put it in, right? right. So, we, so we don't want a drug to lower our blood pressure necessarily. We want to get to the root cause, the inflammation, the poor diet, the insulin resistance, so that the blood pressure can come down to its normal state. And that's you know, I want to, uh, like we said, you know, there's exercise, there's whole food plant-based diet, there's low fat, you know, low fat diet, all these kinds of things. But you've also in your research discovered a really powerful ancient remedy, this ancient uh, food, if you will, that you've been using with your clients and patients and the people you work with. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about that, um, you know, how you discovered that and, and, you know, what people need to know about it. No doubt. <clears throat> yeah. So there is a uh, super berry. It's, a, it's an ancient superfood. 
uh, and it is called the Indian gooseberry or otherwise known as the amla berry, A-M-L-A berry. And they've been using this in Ayurvedic medicine in India for the past 2000 years. And they use amla berries to treat everything from, you know, high blood pressure to liver cancer, to respiratory infections, to snake bites. So when I first saw that, I was like, oh, this is a, some kind of snake oil. It doesn't really work, right? It's just like, <laughs> you can't snake have a food snake that oil. helps everything. <laughs> It's not possible. But then I started reading the research. And uh, the more I delved into the research, the more I was like, wow, umla berries can definitely lower glucose. That's that's very real. And I was like, wow, umla berries can left definitely lower blood pressure. That is definitely real. And then the icing on the cake for me was that as I was doing more research about it, I realized that umla berries not only can lower cholesterol, umla berries are the single most powerful cholesterol reducing food ever discovered. Wow. So it has this trifecta approach or this trifecta um, uh, properties of lowering blood pressure and blood glucose and cholesterol simultaneously. And I was like, I was blown away by the whole thing. But the, the reason why that happens in the first place is because umla berries are the single most powerful uh, in anti-inflammatory food ever discovered. So look on the screen right here. And what you're going to see is- a this, is anti, this is antioxidant value, yeah? This is antioxidant value, exactly right. So you, what you'll see is, this says oxygen radical absorbance capacity, otherwise known as ORAC, O-R-A-C. And this is just a measurement that scientists use in the laboratory to determine how much anti-inflammatory power a given food has. You can take any food. You can take brown rice. You can take quinoa. You can take goji berries. You can put it into this test and it'll come back with a value. And that value determines its anti-inflammatory power. Okay. So what you'll see here is at the bottom of this graph, you'll see goji berries, which are known to be a very powerful anti-inflammatory food. They have an ORAC value of about 3000. Then you've got pomegranate in the 4000s, blueberries in the 9000s, pecans in the 17000s, cacao powder in the 55000s, acai berries in the 102000s, and turmeric at 127,000. So you can see there's a, there's a very large change from the goji berry all the way up to the turmeric. But what's fascinating is that the umla berries have an ORAC value of 261,000, which is twice as powerful as turmeric, which is saying a lot unto itself because turmeric is known to be very powerful. And in comparison to the goji berries, it's a 75X difference. All right, so these umla berries are the single most powerful anti-inflammatory food ever discovered. There's literally no other food on the planet that has the anti-inflammatory power that the umla berries do. And it is this anti-inflammatory power that then results in those three effects of lower blood pressure, lower glucose, and lower cholesterol simultaneously. So when I was doing this research, I just like, it, it seemed like, the, like the, it was just getting better and better and better. And I was like, I, I don't understand how there could be one food that like nobody's even talking about. Yeah. Right? This is some, some mystery food that like, you know, it's very hard to find information because you don't, you don't go to social media and people are like, Hey, you should try my umla berry powder. Right. Part of the reason for that is because umla berries are disgusting. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> to you. Like, if you pick up an umla berry, which you can find at these like Indian grocery stores. I've had them. Yeah. You've had them before, right? Yeah. How did it taste I'm, to you? Yeah. No, they're really strong. They're very, I, I think they're very bitter, right? Yeah. It's extremely bitter to the point yep. where like, you know, you put one in your mouth and all of a sudden you're just like, oh my God, what is this stuff? Right. Which I is, which is the point. I mean, the bitter foods generally are some of the healthiest foods for us, you know, and it's not like bitter foods aren't meant for us to eat, you know, pounds of it a day it's like you know little amounts give you tons of medicinal value but it's that bitterness i mean think of think yeah. of um you know liver detoxification herbs they're all very very bitter you know kidney cleansing herbs they're bitter parasite cleansing herbs they're bitter every herb that really helps cleanse us and clean us out are actually very bitter but we're meant to take it you know in small amounts once a day as, as like a medicinal type of value so yeah, I've just gotten so used to bitter stuff over the years. I, I remembered it being bitter, but like, I wasn't like, oh, that's the worst thing in the world. But I also take very bitter stuff on a daily basis. So I'm just kind of used to it, you know? Totally. No, but you're absolutely right, which is that, you know, you take these things in small doses. And it is, in fact, it is the compounds that create the bitter flavor and the sour flavor. Those are the medicinal compounds. 
right? So the fact that it tastes bitter is actually an indicator that it has a very powerful medicinal effect. Right. And so, so you can, is that there's all oh, this, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead and finish. What's crazy is that what the Ayurvedic world had discovered thousands of years ago without the use of modern laboratories is what the modern research world is now proving over and over and over again. So there's all these randomized control trials and um, you know paper after paper that comes from various uh, research teams across the world that have studied not only the anti-inflammatory power, but also how effectively a small dosage of these amla berries it can affect your blood pressure and your blood glucose and your cholesterol values. And study after study after study show that it has a very striking effect at lowering all three of them. Um, and it's actually even been tested head to head in comparison with diabetes medication, showing that after three weeks of usage, just literally three weeks of usage, it, it is more effective than diabetes medication, Jeez. Um, than oral diabetes medication um, with zero side effects. Yeah. And then, especially when it comes to statin medication, I know lots of people are on statin medications and statin medications are just, you know, they're, they're tough because they have a lot of side effects that are associated with them, whether it's a GI disturbance or whether it's like muscle pain or, um, you know, like a, like, it's almost like lightning bolts, um, that a lot of people feel in their nervous system. Um, there are studies that demonstrate that when you consume umla berries on a daily basis, you within, uh, 12 weeks, which is the, what is that? That's three months. Uh, you can lower your total cholesterol by 11%. You can lower your LDL cholesterol by 15%. And you can even raise your HDL cholesterol, which is the good cholesterol by 17%. And they've been tested head to head versus statin medication and they get better results in statin medication, again, with zero side effects. That's crazy. That's amazing. Well, and obviously, I mean, that's clear. You and I have been talking about this for a while and that's clearly why you started the company Omla Green, right? To bring Correct. high quality certified organic uh, you know, omelet berries to the public, but also uh, make it taste good, right? And so you put it into a tea. I've actually been using your tea, the omelet green tea. I've been trying all of them. And I can tell you that these actually do taste good. My favorite one is the, is the hibiscus one. It's got cinnamon and I love cinnamon, by yeah. the way. Um, but the elderberry one is good, is good too. Like I like this because you actually add the elderberries, which, you know, you're getting more vitamin C in there and some zinc. Plus you have ginger, right? So you figured out a way to take something that generally is very, very bitter and very hard to take, very hard to eat. And, and most people won't take it because it tastes so terrible. <laughs> and, right. gen and, you know, powders we know are better for us than capsules. You could put it into a capsule, of course, but powders are always better. It's better to get the food in your mouth. Neuroscientists have discovered this, that it can take up to 20 seconds of having something in your mouth before your brain fully recognizes it and creates the proper enzymes to help actually you know, um, educate, you know, tell your digestive system what food is going in your body. So right. I'm always a big believer in powders over capsules, even though, you know, capsules are an option, but I know you have these tea powders that taste amazing. And, um, you know, talk a little bit about these because this is a great way for people to actually get this high quality omla berry into your diet. It's a tiny scooper. I notice. like I, I'll put it in just, I'll put it in plain water and just mix it and drink it. Um, I know people, you know, will put it in, um, make tea out of it and different kinds of things. There's a tiny bit of green tea in there, right? So also green tea is like one of the best anti-cancer foods that have been studied. We've done multiple studies through the Beljansky Foundation on the effectiveness of green tea against uh, all kinds of cancer, uh, which is amazing. So, you know, the yeah. fact that there's green tea in there, there's other superfoods, there's the omelet berries in there with that super high antioxidant value. Um, yeah, let, I mean, what, what results have you guys been seeing with uh, people using these? Okay, so uh, the results have been fantastic. So uh, just to be super clear, we have a line of, of we created a tea, right? And, and the goal in creating this tea was to take the omelet berries and make them taste less crappy. That was literally all we were trying to accomplish because the, the, the berries taste so bad that it's almost, it's like impossible to actually consume. That's part of the reason why they're not that popular. So uh, I was playing chemist in my kitchen back in San Francisco, you know, like 10 years ago to try and figure out how I could mask the flavor. And I was trying to combine it with every spice and every tea I could possibly find. And it turns out that when you combine it with specifically oolong green tea, then you get this tremendous, uh, the, the oolong somehow masks the flavor of the umla berries and it just neutralizes it. And all of a sudden now you're tasting something that's almost like green tea like. And so just like you were saying, green tea has some very powerful anti-cancer properties. It also has some very powerful 
cardiovascular boosting properties as well. Incredibly powerful tea. So the first version is the green bottle, which you had had in your hand. And that's literally just oolong green tea plus amla berries with no additives, no fillers, no artificial sweeteners at all. We then made a hibiscus version, which contains hibiscus and mint and cinnamon and ginger plus the amla berries. We then made an elderberry flavor, which is elderberries plus mint plus ginger plus cinnamon plus the amla berries. And every time we made a new flavor, people were like, oh my God, this stuff tastes even better than your last version. It's even better. It's even better. And so we've been, you know, we've had this company now for seven years because mainly people, people are looking for something that they can take on a daily basis that, that isn't so hard, right? Of course, I want you to eat a plant-based diet, just like Nathan. Um, but, you know, that can take a while to transition into, and there's a whole bunch of logistics about it. But when it comes to just like a tea powder, you know, you open it up, you take a scoop of it, you drop it in a glass of water. Or you can put it in a smoothie, or you can put it on top of your oatmeal, or you can put it in a salad dressing, or you can put it in a soup. I don't care. It, don't, it doesn't matter what you put it in. Just get it in your body every single day. When you do that, the results are bonkers. And I say bonkers because we have gotten feedback from thousands of our customers over the course of time. And people are like, what is going on? I literally made no changes to anything else I'm doing other than incorporating Amla Green Tea into my world. And now all of a sudden my LDL cholesterol dropped by 30 points. Statin medication, out the door. People are telling us, oh, my blood pressure medication. All of a sudden my blood pressure has dropped by 25 points, both diastolic and systolic. Boom, blood pressure medication, out the door. Glucose concentrations, they're dropping by 10, 15, 20, sometimes maybe like 30 to 50 points. And as a result of that, people, including myself, now can get away with using less insulin, right? So we see all these effects over and over and over again. And then in addition to that, people are coming up to us and they're like, dudes, I got more energy than I've felt in a long time. And I literally haven't made that many changes. I just put this stuff into my diet and I'm like, good, it's working. That's awesome. I'm very glad to hear that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the huge. Is because, you know, there's uh, you know, the green tea can be very energizing, but in addition to that, these umla berries just have a, anytime you're, you're reversing inflammatory processes, you're going to feel better. Period. End of story. So the, obviously, you know, a little couple disclaimers here, right? Like you're going to, you're getting these case studies from people who are sharing with you their results. This is not a medication. There's no right. nobody prescribing anything here. It's a tea supplement. There's no guarantees that you're going to get all these results and whatever. Just obviously, let's you know give a little disclaimer for people. It's sure. you're you're hearing these stories from people who are taking these products and then writing back to you and saying, "Here's what we're seeing," and you're like, "Well, yeah, that's amazing to hear." And the reason we formulated this was because the science showed us that is what was going to happen. Anyway, that's what's happening when people are taking the omelet berries, right? And so exactly. now in terms of the dosage, like, is it the, the dosage that you see in the studies yes. per serving size? And is it generally just one serving a day? Uh, if I'm just looking for, you know, general health and wellness benefits, like, is that what you're, you're seeing? Is it multiple servings a day? What do you normally do? Okay, great question. So just like the protein powder that you made for plant powered athlete. It's, it's the very same thing. You went to the research and you said, how much of these very specific adaptogens should I be putting into the protein powder in order for them to, for people to get a therapeutic effect? We did the exact same thing with amla berries. And I took a look at a whole bunch of research papers and figured out what is the dose, the dose that's required that would give the effect. And then we made sure that when we formulated the product, that every single serving had at least that dose. And we made it just a little bit stronger than that dose. And so every time you open this up and you take one microscopic little scoop, right? I mean, we've heard this from so many people. They open this, this bottle up. Yeah, it's tiny. I'm this. telling you. It's like the smallest <laughs> scooper in the world. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know if you see my screen right here, but this is, this is the size of the scoop, right? It's like, you can, you can almost miss it. Right. So you take this thing and, and you just drop this right into your water as that symbol, right? Um, each scoop has the therapeutic dose actually has a little bit more than the therapeutic dose. And that's the reason why it's working so effectively. Um, and then, you know, we also are meticulous about sourcing our ingredients properly. So we made sure that we sourced amla berries from an organic grower that is tested in India um, bring it over here to the United States, test it as again, and then we add only organic ingredients, no fillers, no additives, no artificial sweeteners, nothing, because we don't believe in that stuff. And um, as a result, you have as pure of a product as you can possibly get. Um, and, you know, it's been a complete game changer for so many people. And my transparent, my goal is to just try and get this out to as many people as possibly can, because 
There's so many people that can benefit from this. And most of the people just have, most of the world just doesn't even know this stuff even exists. Yeah, exactly. And that's why, I mean, I love that uh, you've created this product. I mean, you're anybody out there who's going to create something with such high integrity that is super clean source that is, you know, using science to formulate it. Like you and I have that in so much in common. That's why I know, you know, as I use it and see the research on it and listen to you talk about it, it's like, I absolutely have to share it with my community. It's like, you guys, you got to try this. You got to use it. You got to add it in. If you're concerned about your blood sugar, if you're concerned about cholesterol, if you're concerned about insulin resistance, if you're concerned about um, blood pressure, literally take a scoop a day, put in water, tea, smoothie, whatever, and take it for 30, 60, 90 days, and then see what happens. Retest and see what happens, right? Like, mm -hmm. not making any guarantees here. Obviously, we're just saying this stuff clearly has a lot of science behind it, and a lot of people are getting a lot of really, really good results. And you guys, you guys have put together, like, an incredibly generous offer for our community. So if you guys go click the link below this video – right now, it'll take you to a special page. It has a wonderful discount if you're gonna choose, because a lot of people like, wanna try like all, you know, the, the three different flavors. Like I said, Correct. some Correct. people love the plain, some people, you know, and they generally love all of them. I like all of them, and my favorite is the, is the hibiscus one. You guys put it together so you can get all three bottles in one at a super discounted price, or you could get two of each at even a bigger discounted price, Correct. which I highly recommend. So if Correct. you click the link and go over, you'll see your options there and you'll be able to get, yeah, you can just try one bottle of the green, but you're gonna get a way bigger discount, like up to 50% off if you do two of each. And then that'll give you enough for like six months, I think, right? That's exactly right. Right, so it's a huge that. discount. You guys have done, like just made it super awesome for our community. So. Go try this for yourselves now. Click the button and go get some for yourself. And, and then, you know, whether you're checking your numbers or not, you just know that you're getting a really high quality in, um, scientifically tested ingredient into your body every single day in the dosages that it's shown in the studies to actually be effective. And it's organic and clean without any junk fillers and stuff like that, which you guys know I am absolutely a huge proponent of. Um, and so... If you don't want, and, and I know they have a tiny bit of caffeine from the green tea, right? Like you get, I mean, green tea has such a tiny bit of caffeine, like a quarter of a cup of, of normal oh, caffeine, right. right? But there's a button. So is, some people don't want caffeine. So yeah. there's a button below those three images that says, click here if you prefer products with no caffeine. You can click that and then you'll be able to get the same products with zero caffeine as well. Totally up Correct. to you. But Correct. that little bit of caffeine actually has a tremendous benefit as well. So if you don't mind caffeine, a little bit of caffeine, there is some benefit there for you. No doubt. You, you hit it on the head. And you had asked me one more question, which I didn't answer earlier, which is uh, how many servings per day? So uh, minimum dose would be one serving per day. M recommended dose would be two servings per day. Okay. And the reason for that is because uh, what the science shows is that people who consume uh, a specific number of milligrams, is about a thousand milligrams per day, are the ones that are getting the, the, the biggest benefits. So we formulated this so that every time you take a scoop, it's getting you approximately 500 milligrams. And that means if you do once in the morning, once in the AM hours, and then once in the PM hours, you're getting, basically getting a double dose. And that right there is, gonna, is what's going to lead to uh, long-term, um, you know, short-term results as well as inc improved long-term anti-inflammatory power. So my recommendation would be make a commitment. Um, pick up either the three bottle or the six bottle pack, just like uh, Nathan had said, um, and that way you'll have enough of this stuff to actually make it work. Commit to it for 90 days. Do it 90 days in a row and have it twice a day and just watch. Just watch what happens. I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised by what you see. That's so awesome. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, Cyrus, appreciate you, man. I appreciate your, your attention to quality, to, to actually you know, reading the research and the science and educating people and creating high-quality products that actually changed people's lives for the better. So I love you like a brother, dude. Thanks for coming on and, and sharing this with my community. Super excited to be able to get this out to uh, our community at this, at this uh, great discount here. So thanks for doing this for us, man. I appreciate you. Anytime. You're the man, Matt. I really appreciate you uh, having me on here. And uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity to be able to talk about this stuff. I mean, I'm here just to try and make people's lives better. And anything I can do in collaboration with you makes my heart very full. So thank you, my man. I appreciate it. Love it. All right. Take care, everybody. Talk to you soon.